Hello, my name is Mohammed, um, Mohammed Ashamlan. I'm trying to demonstrate uh, malware reverse engineering. I'm sorry, malware, uh, malware analysis tools. Um, the tools is Python code, so I assume it's portable, portable to any type of OS platform we're dealing with. Um, I like it because it's command line. But before we're going into it, uh, let me tell you the, the reason for this demonstrations. Before the topic. Um, the topic, as you can see, it's uh, extracting a URL from a code. So we will have a code, and just for the like argument, we have a malicious code that we really, like, we will, like, I, I know that is a malicious code, so we assume that someone gave us a malicious code, and they tell you, okay, trace the URL for it. So we, we, the assumption that, you know, you have a malicious code and you try to find the URL and then you try to test its availability like some URLs just they, they don't exist in the in the online just like is, how can I say it? just like they give you an URL but in fact it's not a website um, it's uh, the class called advanced model reverse engineering and this is a project an individual project for the class uh, from Florida International University in short FIU Instructor is Dr. Faisal Kalim, and I am Mohammed Ashamlan, and also I'm the presenter for this. Before going to this topic, um, we need to have a disclaimer. Um, due to the nature of this topic, of course, we need to have disclaimers, and let me read these three lines here. This video is solely for education purposes and that I'm not responsible for any harm or misuse. Hopefully, there is no misuse. Hopefully, this be used for the greater good. Uh, it's, it's, it's a powerful tool, you can uh, help a lot of victims, um, innocent people um, to secure their privacy, their information and like uh, in our like uh, digital age we know that information is really important so um, their information is also should be protected and uh, these malicious uh, malwares or code sometimes they infer like they they cross the lines and they don't, um, they, they get, like, how can I say it, like, they don't respect people's privacy and this is a big problem and we want to give privacy to everybody. So this is just a disclaimer that video is not solely for education purposes and that I'm not used, I'm not responsible for any harm or misuse and there is, hopefully there are none. Um, the tools I'm dealing with here. Uh, the OS is a, is a Linux, it's called Open to 12.04. The machine is 64. Um, to prove it, let me open, show you here. Just I'm using Unity. It depends in the in the desktop environment you're dealing with. But for Unity, just go to Help and Open to Help. You the Open to Help will show up, and you here you can see that Open to 1204 LTS. Um, LTS it stands for Long Technical Support. Um, Every 1204, if you have, it's LTS, so you don't need to worry about it. But uh, some districts, such as 1210, does is not LTS. LTS it just means like you have like uh, longer support cycles than other this other um uh, other uh, versions. For, let's say version for now. For example, version 1210, you have less cycle than uh, version 1204 because L04 is. I'm sorry, 1204 is LTS version. So this is the the Ubuntu version I'm dealing with here. Python. The Python I'm using now, you, you can open the terminal by clicking Control Alt T in the keyboard and simply write Python flag V. Uh, there are two things important here. One, Python without any flags, these things called flags. Uh, uh, you will access the interpreter of uh, Python and you will be inside Python so we will not deal with bash uh, shell this is a bash shell so our demonstration will be always in the bash shell we will not access actually we would access the, in, the, in the software uh, Pee the interpreter but for now we will try to use Python we will try to use it from bash script so we need the flag and the other thing is important that uh, this is a case sensitive, so big V is important to see the version. So this version, as I have it here, 
to show you that if you have Python without any flags, you get to an interpreter. And this is not this is not a bash script. Just exit, right quit with uh, empty parentheses. Now um the tools we're using is called I'm sorry for pronunciations. I think it's called Peewee. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. Uh, the version is 2.0. To show you Peewee, simply just copy paste and Google it. And this is Peewee. Uh, Peewee, as you can see from here, is static malware analysis. You can perform a lot of functions to download it. Download, and I already downloaded this version. I don't want to download it again, uh, but f for you, you can just click download. Actually, it depends on what what uh, machine you're dealing with. 32, you need to click this one. I'm using 64, so I had to click this one. Um, the malicious code we're dealing with. Um, again, we're assuming that someone show up and tell us, like, this is a malicious code. You want you to trace um, the URL. So this is the malicious code we have here. This is what's available in the, in the lecture, in the course. So I will demonstrate this practical malware analysis lab. And this uh, uh, malware analysis tool, which is Peewee. Uh, before going to the experiment handle experiments, there's still also things I need to talk about. Why I'm using this. Um, there's a lot of reason. One. It's command line Python tool. So why I want command line? Command line is easy to integrate to your applications, and so you can um, like you can have an application, an app, or a, uh, let's say a malware analysis tool. So you can integrate this one in your in your code simply. So and also command lines, you can also have sh scripting in a script, like script asking like script import other script which is a, is a really neat like I say characteristic that is a command line Python tool and it's also an open source uh, so anyone can modify it can check the code and it is a Python so Python is it's uh, Python is a plat cross platform so but here they just use it for Linux tools the, I'm sorry, Linux OS, 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 and but this is like Python. It can run in any architecture, not just Intel, ARM, MIPS, uh, Power, and a lot of processor we have. And uh, so this is important. That is a, a command line and it's Python. So you can deal it. You can operate it in mobile, server, PC, tablet, you name it. If it's support Python, should be you need to have some tweaks on this uh, Peewee and it will work hopefully. Hexadecimal viewing. Uh, usually, uh, when you deassemble something, you have it in uh, machine code, but machine code is like the representation of uh, like binaries is easy to be represented in hexadecimal, and hexadecimal is, is easy to to look to and also to read is they are not human readable but uh, for hexadecimal it's easier if you try to read it so hexadecimal viewing you have it uh, deassembling Intel 163264 again uh, my machine is 64 and this is I tried it we will try it I have problem with it hopefully when you, when you see me and you try it in one of your code you will um, hopefully it works um, I, I assume because the the malware I have is 32 and the machine I'm dealing with is 64 and that maybe create the problems. I'm not quite sure about it but maybe that's the reason for it. Uh, support PE and also ELF file format. Uh, what's worth mentioning here is PE stands for Portable Executables. Portable Executables what uh, usually that means that they have DLL, DLL stands for Dynamic Link Libraries, and they uh, ex import a lot of these libraries. And uh, some of these libraries are such as like uh, networking, kernel, changing some of the root kits. I'm sorry, that's uh, some um, like important uh, li files. They called root kits. Um, so you can change the system uh, files, important files that that can the malware. Um, to have like specific condition it can be effective and to be like a 
even to destroy the system, turn it down, or maybe to use it as such as, such as the bootnet. So also um, disable function names and string data references. So to show you the strings, and just again our goal is URL and to extract the URL. So URL categorized under uh, string data references. So this is what we're really targeting here. And the last, I, there's a lot of function in the website, but this is the, the ones I thought I want to share with you guys. But for more function, you can look at the website. But this is the most one I really liked, which is it also supports plugs to add more fun features and to the tool. So because it's open source and they also they want to third-party developer to support their platform, so the functionality and features are almost limitless because anyone can show up and develop in this platform. So um, this is like for support continuation in the project, which is really something neat. Um, again, objective. What our objective? My objective basically demonstrating malware analysis tool and also uh, finding at least a URL and testing its availability, if it is really available online or not. Problem that I face, I will talk problems that I face with Peewee. I will show you guys some of the problems. Now let's go to um, directory. So for the directory, um, you have when you download the file, it's, it's tarred, so you can untar it, which I already did here. After you untar the file, you can um, see there's a lot of files here, but this is the Python code, peewee.py. So um, let me just open, sorry, terminal, which is this one. And then let's write Python, peewee, Python, and um, by the way, when you want, when you have auto completion in Bash, when you click type, for example, if you click tab, you have the auto completion. So here, the, the malicious code, we have it here. And this is, um, let me, okay. So this is um, here Python interpreter, then access in the script, and then uh, this is ag agreements which is the, the software. Click, enter, and it's already accessed um, the, the code. So we can see here in this column, and there is in this column a lot of um, this big column, hexadecimal code, and the represented the strings. And you can see there is not a lot of strings here. And when you see that when you have a malware analysis tool and you don't see a lot of uh, Thread as strings. This is something awkward for uh, logistics software because uh, logistics software usually they have a lot of strings. So for uh, but for the malicious one, this is common. You find that not that much of strings here. So this is common for again for malicious code. And here you don't see a lot of things that this program cannot be run in those modes. So not that much of uh, information. But let's say now we run this code and you're not familiar with it and this is the first time running it and you don't know the commands in this code. So what you do? So you just write question mark, enter, and you have um, informations here um, for for this command. You can They can tell you dump hexadecimal by just typing X. If we type X, it show you hexadecimal um, you can s seek a new offset like show you the number the offset to of these you have it less than this sometimes maybe you target a specific block in the code to deassemble but hope but unfortunately I cannot deassemble I'll show you why now um, this is actually let me show you the deassemble So when I do deassemble by typing C, it tells you error. Global name decode 32 bits is not defined. So because I'm running, let me write exit. Yeah, this is important. Um, when you have the software, when you, you need to exit, write just exit and you have it. So we can see here decode 32 bits. So to show you that my system 
is now 32 you can we write u name a which is for all you can see 64 so this is maybe the problem I'm not quite sure but hopefully this is a problem not the other thing um, so question mark we can have a bunch of functionality here s strings so let's see strings when you click actually R um, this is the strings and you can see a lot of them are garbage except this line this is cannot be run in DOS mode so this is um, again if it's a legit software you have more information and you can read more with the strings but unfortunately this doesn't and here they give you like um, by the way this MD5 hash this is other hash to give you hashes and it's also you have a lot of functionality here but the ones we are aiming for is called this one URL so by just typing URL you can have this this um, website which we want we targeting and you can also have um, to check it your check URL which is this one so by typing it it gave you OK which is mean it's still available online um, it gave you a Microsoft website but that doesn't mean maybe the developer is Microsoft it just mean maybe um, it's like a, a, a decoy so let's say we want a report telling us this this software um, more about it like what is it is it what type of malware we're dealing with let me write exit Okay, so now tell us uh, create a new Windows and exact. Before I had a problem, so I had to go back to close the application, and come back, and write threat. So it said created a new Windows and ex uh, existing uh, browser browser session. So if we go to one of the browser, this session popped up from the software. Uh, it tells you uh, all the reports you want to from it. So let me walk you through it. So um tells you the hash and other type of hash and I think this is the the windows when you open the software what it shows usually an agreement you said maybe the 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 end user the victim click accept and this is I'm sorry this is important I think here here yeah Trojan downloader so this malware is Trojan downloader which will download a lot of malicious um, code to application to your system so here we give you the following file created in the system when you do it these all of these will be created in the system and the following directory were created all these directory will also be created memory modifications the memory uh, register modifications the registry modification um so you can see it's modified and they also give you the region for the place so um, this is the this is the the report from Wee. so and one of the things I face the problem that when you click close the, the browser it doesn't unfortunately uh, respond and start continue with you. You need to write exit, and we try to write exit. It uses from the software. So let's just access it again, and let's um, as as I said, when you click C for deassembly, it doesn't allow you. Um, there is a lot of other function such as um, check bad, which is check for unknown bad URL. We know now it is really bad uh, intrusion but sometimes they try to fake you so here when you do it it doesn't show you anything 
maybe you did not detect anything or maybe um this uh code doesn't have only maybe it does have only one URL but it doesn't make sense because it's the actually it is a downloader so maybe I'm not quite sure the downloader architectures but here by writing check bad it doesn't show you anything but that doesn't mean um it doesn't have a, like integrated some I important like hard coded some IPs but it's not in strings if it's in strings the system will check it there's also um check if the PE files is packed which is really important you can say it and also it would not matched so it did not match but um this one is important to see the, what the this software is using but again to the report you see everything here and these all current configuration options showing you for the software and this is some commands let me go to back to the to the website when you click wiki it was good documented an example here so you can play with them. I, I unfortunately I just play with these at the moment. And there's things that I will need to look into it. There's a BDF analysis. And I believe this is something good. So back to the topic. Actually before finalizing it, let me just show you our objective. URL. Let me begin from. So you write Python py then the, the malicious code. You write URL, it gives you the URL, then you write check URL and check the availability. So this is our objective. So we discuss our objective. My name is Mohammed Al Shablan. Uh, our objective again extracting a URL from a code and also checking its availability. The course is called Advanced Malware Reverse Engineering. Uh, it's from Florida International University and it's a good idea to just go back to disclaimers this video again is solely for education purposes and that I'm not responsible for any harm or misuse thank you for watching